Hey guys, we, we made it through. We powered through. But, but to Grumpy, like, just keep in mind, although we had, we had a sh pretty shit time we got hammered, it was us getting to get hammered while the other team was holding down the vital points. Yeah. So, we got fucked, but we were holding up. Yeah, we get points. fucked, but we get the flank, but we get fucked at the Tibsy, time. Why is, why, is, why is your name on their stream? <laughs> yeah, goes was Tibsy to for the win. That was uh, <laughs> Tibsy. CKY oh, over messages. here. They're trapped. Deffy, Hellfire, look, we got everybody. Sober over there as well. Do you forget how Twitch works? There you go. <laughs> Oh, it's a chat. They just put it up. And we've got music or something. Hobo. Oh, fucking oh, yeah. hobo. Buffer isn't buffering all the time for me. Is <laughs> it for someone? Hell. Why is my name in pink? Uh, <laughs> change you can change it. it. Change it now. It's not them. It's, them. it's not you. It's them. It's whatever. It's assigned on them. Fucking eh. I quite like the stream at the moment. One yeah. I can't see anything right now. I really need a piss. Oh, I'm about to go get a drink and some food. About to sit down. About to enjoy this. <laughs> Not red coats, it's tiger coats at para. <laughs> it's, it's just to be nice or something. They know it's all banter. Yeah, they, <laughs> yeah. they, said, it, they said it at the start. They were taking the piss at the start, so... Well, you you'd say it, that was the, uh, the silver, you know. Yeah, but now you can rub it in their face even more, because now it's official <laughs> that they lost. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're three pretty minutes well then, Para. Say again. I note from the first three minutes match, well but nobody wanted to yeah, say yeah, yeah. it. Nice, nice. So wait, Blitz and all the guys are just That's talking right now, and we can't Hello, hello. Alright, oh, I'm gonna is. put you guys there on the stream, so you guys can start I talking. Give me a second, I'll start to I get the video. I think they keep so they can hear us right now. now. Yep, they can they hear us. Can okay. now. Copy. <laughs> that's, that's speaking, but they're very quiet. Money, why so don't he's trying you, to get, uh, yeah, yeah, why don't you start? I'm gonna I don't know, I can't see it. It's still buffering for me. So, I guess, you know, where to start is, uh... So first off, your thoughts. Just, I'll just let you guys freestyle it for a second, and we'll see where we go from there. Well, we start with red coats since you guys took. Ross the, is going to put his prize. posh voice on. Oh god, that's amazing! Going funny. Go on, Ross, you kick off some. I, would, I just want to start off by saying it's amazing, and it just gives squad that extra, you know, that I extra level, that extra angle that I, that I really enjoy. Right and it's you know, you can probably tell by the way I'm talking, I'm still smiling right now. It's oh, it's great. Hundred percent love it, and appreciate what you boys have been doing. Ross hey, you guys right. bring it to the table too. So, uh, what about Blitz and Jabs, awesome Rossi? Awesome. What do you guys think? I'll step in now then. Yeah, it just made of what Russ just said, really. I mean, um, tonight was just another level. I said this when we had our, our cool scrim times. against Exodus. It's another level. Sure Your pub games that do get challenging, and you come up against challenges. This is another level. Everywhere, and Japs will back me up on this, everywhere we went tonight, it was enemies surrounding you. You were getting kicked, you were getting punched, you were just... Oh, it was intense, and I absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. Yeah, there's I, nothing I even like, got words. It's more buffing than words. There's nothing like a little bit of organised chaos, and that's <laughs> exactly what that was tonight. Two good teams up against each other, time and, time it, and it, you could tell by the tickets at the end. It wasn't a whitewash on either the, side. Is anyone watching the playback? Um, yeah. Both no, sides it's like some it. Yeah, when everyone gets back. It's a very, very good match Not to be the involved playback. in. We'll watch watch it it what about you guys through a third? You guys, uh, what do you think? I guess I'll start. Um... Just, we we predicted that the Redcoats were going to be aggressive, and it was true. Um, we tried to fit that into our plans, but, you know, there's only so, so many things you can plan for at once. Dude, iron um, is so it's funny hurt. that they mentioned that it was, like, enemies all over the place, because that's oh, exactly man, how yeah. we felt <laughs> the <laughs> entire time. Uh, They're surrounded. I, I'm still processing a lot of what happened. I'm, I'm still just trying to figure out more or less where we slipped up what we didn't do, what we should have done, that sort of thing. That's still going through my mind. But um, at the Sounds end of the really day, though, down. I want to thank, you, first of all, squad lead I don't, I mean, he lost, for once think? again putting this on, uh, Red Coats for putting up an that amazing match against us. Trained. And uh, all of my guys times. in the 303rd He's... for showing up and yeah. participating and showing that they want to really take this seriously. Yeah, yeah. seriously. So, because yeah, I was thank you guys. Go, go ahead. Yeah. 
they no, I was just going to so say, I uh, feel exactly the same, but you know, three or third point. Yeah, that's the one. Probably why we've yeah, lost the hardest really. fight we've had. The only um, way to thank you guys, you know, people taking time out of the, just to the, play um, not to the diaries. It. Same to our boys, everyone who managed to show up. We did have to let some people down. Um, and obviously, the but boys I, at the I'll top there, the, the devs and uh, live the squad league devs and taxi, you know, thank you very much. No, they're watching the replay. Yeah, likewise. That was a that was a great fight, and at yeah, the end of this day, is the first even, match. Even though we took that loss, right. I uh, got a lot of respect for you guys, and, and definitely still have oh, right. <laughs> anything right now. Oh yeah, man, it's all about having fun. Oh yeah, the the day, I'm sure we'll having fun, right? Yeah. We'll still be they're playing together on public servers and hitting it. You know, we will yeah. still be doing it. Like there's a lot to. I loved it, man. I loved it. So let's get down to the brass tab. Let's split these two. So. You know, I, fair, I'll say the that the um, are like really good to watch. The two matches, and you guys, I guarantee you, you know it, but it's they were totally different. Because, um, and this happened with Everyone three other versus SFSS, where, you know, the first match yeah, was extremely aggressive. Everybody was just on top of each other the whole time. Match two, everyone kind of retreated a little bit and, and basically said, screw all the flags. Like, once the flags were capped on match two, no one even cared about the flags anymore. You know, really, the flag turned into 303rd protecting that fob, you know. So I want to hear what you guys thought about those two, essentially the differences between those two matches and that styles that essentially happened. Um, I mean, yeah, it's uh, it, they were definitely two different games. At the end there, with uh, the 303rd being uh, in the fob, I mean, we were having situations where we were debating amongst ourselves, like, oh, do, shall we go at them? Shall, shall we hold back? Shall we, shall we let him come out? You know, it was, uh, yeah, it was a mix-up for us anyway to see that happen. Um, but I do know what you mean by at the end there, it did turn into a different kind of game completely. I, I just, I just make a quick point from my point of view. I, I thought the second round started a lot more aggressive. Um, hey, pause for a sec, please. Can you please kick Slippy out for a second? His, his audio is feeding. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I thought the second round started a lot more aggressive with three or third taking the two flags um, because in the first one, we, we made a point of pushing as far as we could down the river and capturing as many flags as possible. We didn't get that chance second round because three or third really came out. Towards the end, we sort of realized how we weren't getting the bleed on the last flag but how many we were losing attacking that fob. Like Russ said, we had to we had to reconsider our tactic and, and our way of going about it because we were getting we were dripping yeah, left, right and very, centre. Very, very nearly worked out for three or three holding that fob. Um if you hadn't pulled our guys back, I, I think it would have been much, much closer. Even yeah. if three or three win. Sorry, chaps. Yeah, I was gonna say like your whoever your snipers were and your grenade grenadiers, whoa my my word. They were on point most of the time. Like at one point, like one of your guys held down my entire squad, shooting from that southern hill, couldn't move. So yeah, it was, it was a good game. Yeah, but I know those, there were there were points Grimsy. during uh, the both matches that the three hundred third was ahead, um, and that was that was um, it was interesting to see. I think specifically the last twenty minutes of the last match, um, what the Redcoats were doing because. It was like it was so close. I mean, it was within five tickets at one point. Um, oh, I think shit, once we man. were down below sixty, there was a point. It was like fifty-five, sixty for that last match, and we right. really didn't know what was going to happen. Um, and what we saw early on in the first match was that the three hundred and third kind of gave up on the flag game and was more about um, getting the better defensive position and then getting more kills, which the, which um, they were doing a fantastic job of for the second match. Um, and then it was, I was interested to see, um, the red coats. I, I, I'm not yelling at you guys, but I'm saying you guys were definitely like struggling to figure out what we were supposed to do in order to win for that last 20 minutes. Cause I was hearing a lot of calm chatter from, uh, from every different squad. League. like, you know, you like Jap squad, be more, uh, you know, just keep, um, kicking them in the hills and then Rossi's like, I think we should just like hold back here at the flag and let them come to us. And then Russ was kind of in between. And that I think was like, um, oh, I think it was just a like a really awesome learning moment for everybody. Like, it, what do you do oh, in the yeah. event that they can kill you if you have to go get them? Do you sit back and you let them come to you? You know, so that was really awesome for me to see that the last part of that. Yeah, last that's it. That's it. And oh. we had the extra worry as well when it got so low in tickets that 
we had to buffer that last flag up because if we did lose that last flag, I mean, you're talking ticket loss there, you know, Same so we had that it. to consider as well. And the yeah. whole mix of it, you know, it, it, it was it was all over the place. At one point, we had squads going left, right and centre. So it was um, just, a bit chaotic just, at the end. Yeah, yeah, just on that learning point, I don't think the four red coat leads us here have been in a situation where we've had to deal with that. No. No, we haven't. We've never had to overcome that difficulty. So that's why, Rusty, you had that confusion across the lead because we we didn't know. We've never been through that before, you know? Absolutely. Usually when you get to that point, it's like, you know, you've won the game. Right. And it's, the game was still going on. It's like, do we do we hold here? Let them come to us down that you know down that mountain ridge and just wipe them? And then, right. you know, you're worried about the south side. It's just it's one of them. It was stressful watching that because, you know, like you said, once you had them in that compound, it was like, all right, game's going to be over in like five minutes, and then 10 minutes go by, 15 minutes go by, and people start getting nervous, like, holy shit, they have yeah. a lot of tickets yeah. left. Like, what are we going to, oh, yeah. what's our next move? No, that was, that well, was so very awesome something that, you know, from the, from the, the streaming aerial angle, something we had to explain to, you know, our audience probably would largely know what the hell squad is, but in case we don't, we have to tell people, like, hey, yeah, you know, they, they, these guys have messed off with the. They don't do with the flags anymore right now. They've they've essentially changed the whole scope of the battle to a different area now. And you know, we saw uh, Rossi Raider and you guys kept staying down in that valley just in case people were going to come down. But Blitz uh, and uh, Japsai, you guys were trying to come around the other side of where they were, and you could tell it was like a different thing. And we're just it, when we were talking to the audience, it was like, hey, this is a different. Is turned into a different match. They are ticket watching now, versus being a not. not no one was aggressive, but the styles became entrenched. Of all right, we're watching tickets now. Yeah. To, uh, yeah. Sorry. To Pete, comment on that. That was our. That was our total. That was pretty much our entire scope of the battle from the beginning. We realized that flags don't really matter to us. Tickets do, and we realized flags don't matter so long as you don't lose any. Right. And we our entire our entire approach was to essentially lure these guys into areas where overwatch could declare their position in the in the valleys and then we would just you know hopefully get fired down in the valleys because if if they thought that we were going to try we were hoping that they try and push up we knew we were going to be aggressive but we were hoping was you would push up through the valleys and go for the cap flags and then we would simply lay down fire on you from areas where we could easily defend from like like I've mentioned recently in conversations on the forums, I, f I honestly don't feel like a lot of these maps that are out there, the flags are essentially there because the flag itself is in a position that's easily defendable. It's it's almost like the flag, the, the people who make these layers, they think, okay, how am I, how can I get these two teams to duke it out with each other? How can I encourage fighting? And pulling them out of the hills and fortified areas into a valley where there's flags that's a way to duke it out. That's a way to essentially shift the. That's that's a way to help shift the battle, but in the end, it it it's more important to have uh, tactically tactically advantageous position in the terrain, and have eyes on and be able to predict where someone's coming from. I I'm a firm believer, at least on that so, layer, that the flags don't matter as much. Speaking of uh, map and map layout, we'd like to welcome Iron Taxi to the uh, to the aft party. Hey guys, uh, what thank from your hey, how am I doing? Hey buddy. Well, can you guys hear? You guys can hear me all right. Yep. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah it was. Uh, it was. Sorry. If you guys can hear me, you said yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yep. Um, yeah. No. It was. It was. I mean, there's a lot of things, but one of the big things, obviously, getting to watch people play the match in this in this kind of like level of intensity, teaches us a lot about the map layouts and like how they're functioning. Um, we have a couple, like Sergeant Ross does a lot of map layouts and then also the mappers do map layouts. And there's quite a big difference in there where a lot of the mappers are a little bit more traditional on their AAS. This is actually a Sergeant Ross layer where exactly what you were saying, he's intentionally pulling teams down into these into these really bad positions and making you think about how you're gonna, you know, take them and hold them and stuff like that. Yeah, I've I, I've played this layer since it closed pre-alpha, and back then I figured that was the case. You know, when I'm playing a map, I try to put myself in the shoes of who created the map and think, well, why did they put a flag there? You know, in relation to the terrain that's around it, why do they put a flag yeah. there rather than up here? That sort of thing. I think this particular layer is not supposed to be pretty at all, and that's the whole point. It's supposed you know, to suck. suck well, to well this credit, that's what we wanted, kind of. We we wanted uh, dirty. For for these two got these two clans for Red Coast three hundred third and I mean dirty yeah, yeah. in a good way, you know, no, and that dirty. you wanted to force. Yeah. Oh yeah, got dirty. 
Go yeah, dirty, not... baby. I like it. You know. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <baby>. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I can tell you guys the last twenty minutes or so. Uh, me and Chuck, uh, Arda, the, the other developer, Chuck, is here, the animator, uh, sitting in my office with me right now. And uh, we were, like, edge of our seat, man. My blood's still a little pumping from those last 20 minutes. What are you telling me? Dude, dude? I've still got a smile on my <laughs> face. I love yeah. this. You know, this is, the, this is the future, man. I love it. That was fun. Yeah, it was... Fun. It was, it we was... Were, uh, oh, go we, ahead. We, we were just following... Uh, we, we actually... I was in free cam in the game there. So we were uh, following the the ongoing saga of Battleborn and his uh, SVD, which was a lot of fun too. No, he, you know he played it properly. We were really impressed by the way that like, you know he was he was supporting his team throughout with the SVD. So yeah. we're like, yeah, that is okay to be off on your own using the SVD when you're in communication with your team and you're using it properly. So it was mm -hmm. funny to that actually. I'll speak to that. It was kind of funny. So I I started noticing that, and all of a sudden I'm like, hey. Iron Taxi's following him too, so I, I get the camera, I pan around Battleborn, and I'm like, all right, let me get in this good position, because I, I, I started addressing it on the, the stream to say, hey, he's calling out where these guys are going as they assault the, you know, the 303rd's fob, yeah, yeah, yeah. and out of nowhere, someone capped him with an ACOG, and we're like, that. oh shit, he just went down, like, where'd that come from? <laughs> ACOG. Yeah, we, but he was we, that important. We, we heard the thunk, and we saw the red mist, and we were like, four feet away from him watching him fire. And we were just and like, oh, oh, my God. oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. No, it was a well-placed AK. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, it was fun. It was really fun to watch, guys. So let me ask you guys this. This is for both clans to, to sign off on. And and, and, and me and Iron X Bay have, have talked about this um, behind the scenes. of what, Why do you guys think when we do this to highlight to the people that are on the fence about a joining clans, uh, clans that are on the fence of joining, you know, squad league. But w where do you see, or why do you see, there's such a difference in match intensity doing this versus, you know, your normal nights on a map? I I'll go first. Uh, I'll keep it short as best I can. I'm historically kind of long-winded, but this sort of thing is what this is like. If you if you were to take the cooperation, the coordination the teamwork, all of that communication that you get in pubs every once in a while, those like few those few precious moments of that sort of thing going on in a pub where you, you just you get lucky and you strike it you strike it rich and you've got a great squad together just randomly with people. Take that, multiply it by about ten and concentrate it down to the entire match. And that's what you get here. And mind you, it takes a lot of effort and coordination on a clan's part to get this sort of thing going. You know, we we had a lot. We we had hiccups. We had road bumps. Just getting everything together today, but that's to be expected. You know, it's still the only second event, and I'm not commenting on squad league itself. I'm commenting on just us, just getting everybody together, that sort of stuff. So there's a, there's there's work that goes into actually getting this stuff organized for sure, and it's not something that, you know, people. I I want to make sure that if you know to anybody listening, if you're if you're interested in this sort of thing and you're serious about it, you you need to stay serious about it because. The people that we want participating in this are people that we want it, are dedicated to it, and we need clans that are going to show up that take it seriously. So, if 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 that pure gameplay that squad can you know offer you is what you really want, is what you play this game for, then I highly recommend joining us joining a clan that takes part in these, creating one with your friends if you want to start one, you know, building it up, getting established because this is. This, in and of itself, will destroy everything that you think about squad in terms of your tactics, and you will have another enemy at you know at the heels at your heels, exposing every single little bit of chink in your armor, and you will learn a, a ton. And sometimes you win, yeah. sometimes you lose. Yeah, okay. and I mean, uh, Redcoats, what about you guys? So, so I I, I will not be long-winded, and <laughs> uh, this this is this is everything. That you experience on squad day to day, like they said, multiplied by a thousand. Like everything you enjoy in the game, think of it uh, epitomized in this hour, two hour game. And because of, you know, everyone's naturally competitive uh, and it brings out the best in squad through the competitiveness. And I think going off that, I mean, looking at you guys play, um, I think it's the Arma 3 Dyslexia community uh, that their, their slogan is Serious Fun. Um, Shack Tech, and yep. I was thinking about that while I was watching you guys, because um, I'm hearing like, 
Um, even when like the Tigers, the first round, they were getting their asses kicked at one point. Iron comes on and he's like, you know, stay positive, keep going. And so I said on stream, you know, the Tigers, you know, they've been getting their asses kicked here, but they're like, look at them. Like they're, they're killing people. They're still covering their corners. They're still, you know, they're not giving up. And, and uh, Chad comes in with, you know, yeah, Tigers don't quit. And, and then you move over to the Redcoats for the second round, and I'm following you guys, and you guys are all on your comms, and you're all talking on local. And there was one point when um, some guys are talking about, I don't know what the hell they were talking about, but Rossi comes in, and he's just like, you know, get your head <laughs> in the game. You know, get back <laughs> in it. Split, yeah. And uh, it's, it's, I, what I love about it is you can be serious. Um, you can play the game to your best ability, but you can also still um, – I'm not going to say have fun, but I'm going to say enjoy, enjoy, enjoy the realism that it brings in. Because, yeah, yeah, it's not a simulation game like Arma. It's not trying to be. But I think what, what Squad has when you have these high-caliber players, what it brings to the table is something so unique. I really think that um, it's, it's just hit a perfect tune for, uh, for competitive but also enjoyable, fun um, competitive play. Absolutely, you know absolutely. I agree Can I with talk that. Can I talk that off with something, if you don't mind? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, from, from our point of view, because we're kind of the third party in this discussion, I guess, um, and Squad League, I guess, as well, so there's four. But uh, we're like, this is tip of the iceberg for us. We have literally mm -hmm. just, just gotten to the point where we're going to be completely supported now for the team. We're adding our last few members, and, you know, as of, as of tomorrow, when we do our first uh, meeting of 2016, we're off to the race. It's fully funded, and I, you know, I can't see us being any less productive than we've already been. That's well, fantastic. fantastic. Here, too. Right, this is amazing. All right. All right. Loving it. Can I, can I just go back to the point Rossi made about, uh, you know, the way yeah, we man. play the game? I mean, you see a lot of comments on in various places, social media, about how like people have seen the red coat video for. Uh, the, the first clan match and I got these guys take it too seriously and all this crap. Can I just say from a start, we are friends first and we're we're a clan second. That's how we operate and that's how, you know, you guys will have picked that up the way we go about ourselves, the way we present the clan. We, we're not a Milsim group. I just wanted to get that out there straight away. I think mm -hmm. if anyone that follows the forums close enough though and that has actually played with you guys, I, I, I've never had that thought about you guys whatsoever. I mean, it's you know, we were joking in the Discord chat the other day that, uh, you know, you guys have that arrogant dude. Friends yep. here. The, the logo <laughs> just and stuff. And it's like, you know, that but I'm like, that that's your icon. That's your logo. You know, I kind of wish we know, could man. get that reworked uh, professionally to have it on the overlays because uh, I think that really speaks to you know, the fun that you guys are, you know, too, that it's not it's not it. serious like you said. Not that you don't play the seriously, so I don't mean it that way Oh yeah, we, we have our banter in games and stuff, you know, we all have our laugh and a banter, but when it comes to game time, you know, we're on it and we it's all love it. Shot, it's like... like we were talking about the, the difference to just playing in a normal public server. I mean, don't get me wrong, we have absolute great fun in, a, in our own normal public servers with other random public players, and but playing in what we just played in, um, you know, for a big group of players like that who have got teamwork on their mind and they want it to work like that and play like that to experience it, it's amazing. So I'd encourage anybody thinking about getting involved with this kind of thing to, you know, get involved because it's taken my squad to another level. Uh, you know, just like, when's that next match coming now? Uh, no, it's, it's the same for us to cover it, you know. We... And after every match, you know, you, you guys go back and you think of things differently. You know, you, you know, Iron goes back and starts thinking strategies and all those things. Well, you know, squadly, you go back and go, shit, how was our, how was our delivery stream wise? Look at all those hiccups we had to try and get a match started. Um, do we get people in team speak the right time? I mean, there's so many things that we have to start thinking about. How do, how do we improve our product? I mean, to including how are we delivering stuff to the screen itself. I mean, Rusty spends hours, I spend hours, you know, Ross, IBK, you know, everyone's in the background doing a whole different set of things that's damn near full-time job, and we hardly even play the game to deliver that's this, it. you know? Yeah, yeah. we, we appreciate that to, massively. Uh, we normally go on to Twitch and laugh at our guys getting shot. <laughs> That's it. We've got guys lined up on TeamSpeak right now, like 20 guys sat waiting for us to go back and watch the stream oh, together yeah, and watch the match right. of your yeah, footage. So, you know, I, I do have a question love for Iron Taxi, though. Um, so one thing that I don't know if how much you, you were able to listen to me and Rusty on the thing, but so the flags got pushed through really quickly on match two. 
and the the clans, well, 303rd oh, knew that, hey, let's not deal with the flags. We're going to shift the strategies to something different. Is that something you guys want to think about in the future? Like, do you want people to focus on flags, or do you like that? I mean, because what if, what if some clan basically at the very beginning said, hey, give them all the flags. While they're working their way up, we're just going to go and trench a fob. We're going to sit here, and that's where the battle's going to happen. Do you guys think about going, hey, we don't want it that way? We would prefer this? What's your thoughts on that kind of match setup, you know what I mean? I think he's, oh, was a, Did he leave us? I think he's watching <laughs> the stream. I can see him chatting in the stream. So yeah, yeah. Hope I'll I'll was hey, message. taxi. Oh, sorry, was that Hobo. directed at me? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we were trying to ask you. Um, yeah, he said Yeah, we were just trying to there. ask you that if, uh, if you guys think about clans that, say, would abandon flags altogether <laughs> to we'll basically build ticket fobs to start protecting themselves, you know what I mean, where they don't use the map for what it is. Do you guys have any thoughts on matches shifting that way like the second match did? Well, like, kind of what I was saying initially is it's, I think that watching these matches is going to dictate a lot of what we do in the future and i mean really it's going to come down to the enjoyment level of everybody in the round and as long as they're, so it's not a gaming type mechanic you know fobs are supposed to be important they're supposed to be essentially as far as there's right? no quality settings yet and we they're going well to become over. more that they don't, in the future they're going to have to supply them they're going to have a lot more importance you know things like deployable mortar pits and emplacements are going to be things to be reckoned with right really important think about this map with mortar pits Mm. Oh, no. guys Holy yeah. crap. Yeah, you wouldn't have, you know, both teams sitting sometimes where they were. Oh no. There'd be no sitting at all. <laughs> no. And this is the vehicle map. Like I mean they're all yeah, you can yeah. have vehicles on any of them, but this is the map that you really go, we need vehicles. Is Absolutely. This one. Yeah. Vehicles to me seems sort of like this impending doom where it's gonna change <laughs> what I'm it's it's gonna change what I'm used to well, so yeah, much. If I can speak to that I'm gonna a have bit. to I think, you know, philosophically and design-wise, our intent is not to have a lot of vehicles on the map. And they're going to be valuable assets. And, I, you know, the direction we're trying to head with them right now is it's something that you're going to want to repair in the field and bring back up to operation. It's not just going to be something that's going to spawn all the time and you're going to have access to That'll it. That'll be not a great be like that. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to, you know, you lose a, a Humvee in a round like this, you're going to be the biggest asshole on your team. <laughs> they're going to be like, you know, you're an idiot. Uh, um, there might be some, again, we're still working through some of the mechanics later on for like having a, you know, a specialized squad, which means a single guy couldn't get in a Humvee. And perhaps when you get in that Humvee and take it as part of your squad, that's now your Humvee. It might be locked to your squad and it will be, you know, assigned to the squad leader to assign a driver, for example, or something of that nature. And that's kind of what we're working through right now, which is why we aren't really rushing. We want to have those mechanics kind of ready, to, at least in a, at least in a really primitive form. We want to have something there to kind of protect the vehicles and make them important from the beginning. I've got a question for Taxi. Go. After after watching this event and seeing how this went through, and essentially assuming that this type of gameplay is like near the peak of the intensity of what this game can be. Mm -hmm and the speed at which it happens, yeah. do you still see, with added development down the road, do you still see things considerably like slowing down? Do you think they need to slow down, or do you think whether it's like in the design plan, or...? Well, in terms of... I guess I, guess I have this idea that, in general, the gameplay will slow down because there'll be more planning and more, like... And is that a positive or a negative to you? That'd be a positive to me. It would slow down. I think it, some elements will definitely slow it down, yes. Like more of a deliberate, like there's more of a deliberation of, yeah. you, know, you know, planning a, your next move. I mean, obviously there's a nothing... Massive, a massive element of that, though, is, and this is kind of what we're talking about globally, is going forward, vehicles, having, like, think about this layout of this map. When you have vehicles, the spacing between the teams on this map with vehicles is going to be massive. Yeah. So the intent is going to be much, much, much heavier, of course. Like if yeah. you're going to move from a village to a village, you're going to have to make a conscious decision to do so. It's not just a short, a short walk, right? Right. Yeah. So I would say yes, because of maps and because of some of the mechanics, I think it will just happen naturally. I don't think we'll have mm -hmm. to force it. 
Okay, cool. So I'm looking Fools, forward Fools to that. Road's a great example too. Once that's fully opened up, like we're hoping to have that opened up at the end of January to the entire map area. Um, that's going to be much wider areas to kind of cool. traverse, right? I love me a bit of Fools Road. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's funny about Fools Road though. Full, we, we did a little bit of overhead stream once on it. I don't know if it's stream, but we were just checking it out. But mm -hmm. Fools Road's hard to cover from the air. Because the force is so dense yeah. throughout it, you you can't see anything from an no. audience perspective. Understood, yeah. I, you know, it'll be interesting because once we open up the north, if you guys are all familiar with that map from the past, um, we open up the northwest. It's way more open fields and way more, um, you know, kind of connections between all the the forested areas. And one thing we're actually talking about right now is thinning out the forest just a touch, like fifteen percent or ten percent. Um, one, to get a little bit of performance back, and then two, to kind of open up some of the areas a little bit more, some of the sight lines. We would like to have a, maybe like, you know, an extra 20 meters of engagement or something like that, I think would be really good on that map. I feel you. For sure. Yeah. Go ahead, Russ. No, nope, I just said I feel you. I feel you. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. So uh, you know, the, uh, bit, yeah. Go ahead. The, uh, you know, and we know that everything is... I mean, there's so many things you guys want to get to, but, uh, you know, I, I'm sure you see the limitations of covering matches this way is, you know, A, that the people can't see what the objectives are while they're mm -hmm. watching. We have to throw those maps up, and then we don't even know where we are. But then, two, and and, and trust me, we're patient with this, so by no means are like, ah, oh, please yeah. do this tomorrow. But, uh, God, if you can, like with Fool's Road, that's what made me think of this, is if, if you if the cams can come to a point where they say, look, all right, we can't see too much here. Let, let me hit, go ahead and jump into uh, Rush UK's field of view, yeah, and now yeah. we can feed the audience, hey, now we're watching him go through here. Is that something you guys think could be on the roadmaps at some point? I think you guys put together a wish list for us, did you not? Oh, yeah. yeah I, I heavily went through the priorities uh, yes, last night. But... I spent quite a while going through there and, and making sure it's not – I, I could sit there and throw everything high priority. <laughs> That'd be stupid, you know. But. I think in terms of, uh, you know, just to be realistic with you guys in terms of timeline and that kind of stuff. Well, first of all, that list is very – we're very aware of that list, and we are talking about that list, mostly through um, through Corey, the, the primary coder for that stuff that's done sure. stuff for you guys already. Sure. Um, how we're looking at our development right now, as we've told everybody publicly already, is kind of anti-cheat. Um, getting our getting the vehicles ready because essentially I think I've explained this a little bit to some people, but we're going to take the the inher the um, the native code in UE4 for vehicles. It's just not sufficient for what we want to do. So we're going to be rewriting the NetMove component to be similar to the players so that it'll be more robust long term. Um, so that those things are kind of taking a priority for us right now, and then stabilization and uh, performance over the next month to two months. But I think right immediately after that would be the next stage of us going into the camera system and figure out, you know, what can we do with this to make this better? Definitely, we've been talking about having a squad leader follow camera since before you guys even started squad league. Like, that's oh, on our wish list. That'd be cool. Where you could actually just pop around to squad leaders, essentially have a GoPro on their head and a localized uh, um, microphone. So you could just nice. jump from camera to some squad leader to squad leader on their head. would be really, really fun as well as a cameraman. God, huge, huge help. Yeah. I think the overlays are easy, like showing the tickets, uh, map, all that kind of stuff. I think that'll be no-brainer stuff that is already on the list and is already something that we're like, yeah, of course we're going to do that. Have you seen uh, Have you seen Wargame Red Dragon, how that is when you're zoomed out, how you see the overlays of the capable zones? Yeah, I think we've talked about that too also with FOBs. Yeah, that would be that would be radius. super nice to see. Yeah, I think Corey's Corey's quite keen on uh, this being his little pet project as well. So, on the side, so I think he he enjoyed this stuff is really easy, comparatively speaking to what he normally does All on a day by day yeah. basis. So I think it's quite satisfactory for or satisfying for him to work through this stuff just over time. So I can I, you'll probably see dribs and drabs, but I see a more concerted effort once we've gotten through the couple last feature hurdles that we need to do, particularly vehicles and stability. And performance. Yeah. And we're patient anyway. I mean, because we, like we said, you know, the um, the end of the year is when we want to hit our full, first full league that mm -hmm. really is the league, you know. So we're, patient as can be. Yeah. yeah we're, Rusty, we're, take I, it over. I keep saying to people, this is a long play. This is not a game that's going to, it's supposed to end in six months. You know, we're, we want this game to be played for several years. So 
you know, it's going to take a little time to get it to where we want it to be. It's early access, but you know, if it can even live half as long as Project Reality did, we've done something that most games can't do. Absolutely. Well, yeah. So we're, I mean, we're about 38 minutes in. So unless any, any of the other cool. clan guys have any uh, questions for Iron um, or for any of the squad league guys, um, I'm going to go ahead and do a wrap up. Does anybody have any other questions? I'd just like to say thank you very much for everything that you guys are doing. We really appreciate it. Um, it's amazing. And we appreciate all the effort you guys are putting in, you know, to set this up, this event for us to participate in. And just thanks, guys. Thanks to everybody. I am and the 303rd boys. I am for being involved in making this game that sucked me in. I love it, guys. I love it. Thanks very much. Absolutely. I think That's it's a thanks, thanks all around. Us. Because thank I know you, it's man. like when we send out, hey, tell all your guys to wait and spawn, you know, or, you know, tell all you guys the server went down and have them back in there as soon as possible or get them all in there. We know that you guys are multitasking like crazy, and I know it can be like herding cats. So it's it's nice to have, you know, guys that are like really on point with their stuff. So we appreciate you guys thanking us. We appreciate you guys bringing everything you can to the table. And, uh, you know, we really look forward to having more matches. I mean, we have a full hey, month well, in January. Real yeah. quick on that, Rusty. Um so, I mean, if you like seeing these two clans throw down, these guys are throwing down again January 30th. Oh, uh, um, <laughs> that's going to be 27 v 27, and it's uh, it's going to be on Chora for the next map. Um, we have a couple more matches on the 23rd. We have uh, we'll, we'll send out posters for all those as well. We'll get that going. But Red Codes first 303rd. That's happening again on Chora on the uh, 30th of January. Yeah, listen, I was just about to say, we're going to have no time to get our breath back after this because we're going to throw down again very soon and it's going to be an absolute storm. I can't wait. I think, mate. Yeah, we'll learn. We'll Thanks, learn. Thanks, guys. Yeah, totally. Awesome. You guys are, you guys are pillars of the community. Awesome. Thanks, Thank you. Yeah, right, guys. We appreciate that, guys. So with that, we're going to sign off Cheers, Squad guys. League. Come and visit on our forum, squadleague.com. Also visit the guys, these guys on their squad servers. They both have servers on squad, so go and go ahead and go in squad, go in their servers, join up. Uh, and if you don't have join squad our already, servers. yeah, join our servers, join all the servers. Um, go ahead and check out squad, joinsquad.com. Uh, check out their forums and everything else out there. So thanks very much, everybody, Twitch chat, everybody, for coming by today. You can check out our videos; they'll be on YouTube pretty soon, or you can watch our past broadcasts on Twitch. Uh, just want to say. Last final send off. Thanks to everybody for making this happen. This stuff is fun and so much more coming. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you later. Thanks. See you guys.